Bigfoot Martin. Last time out. All the belts. In the ring with him is Freddie King, longtime trainer. So, Herbie in the ring. The belts in the ring. Also in the ring, our MC, Alan Hughes. Let's take it. Hold the WBC Continental American title. officials here, referee Larry O'Connell will referee the contest he will not score three judges, Dave Paris Paul Thomas and Roy Francis they will decide this contest should it go the full 12 round trip Hyde in the white trunks Dixon in the sea green I guess you'd call it, this is round one you know, this Dixon can really produce some good form. Uh, depends what sort of an attitude he comes in with tonight because uh, he blows hot he blows hot and cold, but he can really produce some good form. And the interesting thing and the most notable thing to look up in, in his uh, credentials is out of those 13 wins, 12 of them have come by way of KO. That's right. So he can certainly bang, and he upset Alex Garcia, the number five in the world, with a KO in the, three, in the third round. So he certainly can bang. It took uh, Lennox Lewis seven rounds to get rid of him, so... To be a real handful here. He looks one mean guy. Took a good right hand there from Hyde. Very slow in getting off the mark here. Well, Hyde, as we know, can be dazzlingly quick. Took a good right hand of his Dixon there. Nice doing the right thing, getting that quick flashing jab going in. He's got to keep this guy off him. Got to control and dominate the fight from the centre with that fast, those fast punches of his, the fast jab. Try not to get into a, into a tangle with this guy in the early round. Just keep moving around him. He didn't have to waste himself out by running around the ring, but just stay on the outside and keep those fast punches going. This is a strange start from Dixon. Very slow and very ponderous. He's not... Uh, Nothing at all. If he keeps doing that, he can be sure that Hyde will get him out of there. Oh, Hyde making all the running so far. Dixon looks very apprehensive. There's nothing from him at all. And as Barry made the point, and echoing what I told you when he walked in, he is a big puncher, and he has caused an upset or two in his time, Dixon, so Hyde cannot treat him lightly, but a confident start by the champion. And he's just got to keep circling around this guy and peppering away him with punches. And if he's going to stand there, just keep teeing off like that. If he said break, and he hit on the break, so that's when he was getting the tick off. Of. Oh, 
haven't seen anything at all from Dixon. It's a very strange start for him. Looks very, very much in his shell, just done nothing at all. Very apprehensive. He's got to get going, Dixon. If he wants to hit someone as mobile as his head, he's got to get his punches off quickly. 20 seconds to the bell. Oh, taking this round. Of course, all sorts of permutations and combinations after the uh, shock defeat. Tommy Morrison, in the hands of Michael Bent, the WBO version of the World Heavyweight title. Frank Bruno lurking as part of the equation. All sorts of interesting things could happen in the uh, in the heavyweight division over the next few months. There's Eddie Hyde, Freddie King working with him. Dancing Destroyer from Norwich coming in at 15, five and a half. Genuine heavyweight now. Yeah, he's getting bigger all the time. This is all Herbie's round here. Dixon done very little and he just kept banging away at him, throwing quick clusters of punches. Nothing really hurtful there, but keeping Dixon off balance and not allowing him to get off with his punches at all. <laughs> Just a reminder about the scoring system. We're on a 10-point must system here. 10 points to the winner of a round. Nine or eight, even if it's a particularly decisive round. To the loser, three ringside judges do the scoring. Mandatory eight count, should there be a knockdown. A three knockdown rule is in effect. That's what it did for Tommy Morrison, remember. Three knockdowns in a round, it's all over. Whether you get up or not. Good combination again from Hyde. Four sticks him back to the ropes. He shouldn't be trying to land with anything too substantial at this, at this stage. You should just get all fast punches because Dixon, will, if he keeps trading with him like that, he's a good chance of being able to land on him if he ever starts to throw punches. Good combinations from Hyde, indeed, Barry. Whipped in that uppercut there. Great accuracy for a, for a big man. That's the one thing about Hyde. He can really hit the target area very accurately. Just feeling his way into the contest. Already, as we say, Mike Dixon looking at him very apprehensively. Making that little flurry on the gloves, however, Dixon hasn't really thrown a shot worthy of a yeah, name. It's, so it's far. almost as if he's afraid to throw in case he gets caught himself. Well, I think that's, that's a good point, Barry. Because Herbie's got so, such quick hands, every time he takes his hand away from his chin, he gets nailed with a quick combination. But the only way he's going to hit Hyde is to start to throw punches when he throws. Well, he's got to go out and take a title, him. and he's, uh, he hasn't shown any signs of doing that yet, Dixon. Still, he's taken one hard thrown at him so far, and he's still there. Midway through the second. He's stalking high, but he's not throwing any punches. Those are you know, little pitter-patter stuff, nothing at all. Any substance or any great quality. He, you know, fighting in low gear here. Well, maybe there's a battle plan in the Dixon camp, which we're not privy to, but if there is, it's difficult to fathom exactly what it is. Yeah, pretty ominous tactics by him. Good shot. Big clubbing right hand. Dixon already looking a little puffy around the eyes. Caught him! Relation from Hyde. Caught him! Hyde's not a bad finisher, and Dixon a little bit shaky for the first time in this bout. Really starting to blow a little bit. Yeah, he's just he's fighting like he's in a sort of fifth gear. There's no spark about him, no snap about him at all. He really is just very slow and ponderous at the moment, and he's just taking punches up to now. And how he's just teeing off on him, just going to keep belting away. And if he's keep standing there like that, turns round very definitely again. Again, 
taken this round and dominating the fight. Good left hook, good right hand, and Dixon went back to the ropes. And look at the way he, he keeps on punching until the referee comes in the height. He, he's so accurate with those punches. Good stuff from him. Again, a great attack at the end of the round. Again, he, you know, this one he really did hurt Dixon with good right hand, left hook. He throws him so hard, or so fast sometimes Dixon is, or sometimes Hyde is hard to, to hurt the guy, but he certainly hurt him in that exchange near the end of the round. This is scheduled for 12, remember? Hyde defending his WBO Pentacontinental World Heavyweight title. Can't see it going 12. Ooh, with a bit more aggression from Dixon. I think his corner have told him that, coming out a little bit more purposefully for the start of round three. He's got a hand with some punches. I heard him with a good body punch there. He grimaced and pulled those hands up. Dixon's doing very little punching at all here. He's, he's, you know, there's no point in him forcing his way into the fight if he's not going to throw punches. He just can't come forward like that, though, because that's perfect for Hyde. He'll just pick away at you all night, and he'll snap the head off you with those quick, fast hands of his. You've got to throw punches back at him. And Hyde is expending a lot of energy here, so if he can't get rid of Dixon, it could be dangerous for him in the latter part of this fight. Well, maybe that's what Dixon's counting on. But he certainly wobbled towards the end of that previous round. He's just too quick for him, Hyde. He gets off with those punches before Dixon even sets himself to punch. As soon as he sees him setting, Hyde hits him with three or four quick punches. And that was the first. Worthwhile shot Dixon throw. The left hook got through the Hyde guard. Connected. Didn't do any damage. Midway through round three. And Dixon at last starting to move into some sort of active gear. Good right hand from Hyde. Two right hands. Dixon hasn't been that badly hurt. He wobbled a bit going back to the, the round, the end of the last round. And right above us. He's right above us now. And Hyde again just teeing off with those quick, fast punches. But as I say, it's very difficult to land with power, Dave, when you throw so many of those punches. One's coming right after the other, so you don't get a chance to plant your feet. Sure. Oh, that's a good right. Oh, that was a, yes, that was a good shot. Dixon's taken them well up to now. He's uh, observed a lot of punches. He's landed maybe two or three punches himself in the entire fight. He's actually hit Hyde with. Oh, Hyde's gum shield comes out there. And that will be rinsed. When it comes out accidentally, it's rinsed and put back. If you spit it out, it looks, it looks like it's like rinsed and put back. You get a bit of a wigging, ungentlemanly conduct. You can get disqualified if you do it. You can, uh, certainly, and it looks like I spat the gum shield out, out there as they came in close. Is that a sign that he's beginning to feel the pace? He's throwing a lot of punches, Dave, and, you know, he's put a lot of weight behind him to try and get rid of this guy. When he starts to slow down, that's when Dixon's going to be able to nail him. Well, so far, three completed rounds and three rounds in Hyde's column on my scorecard, at any rate. Yeah. Well, I don't think there's going to be too many arguments about that. He's, he's dominated the fight so far. As I say, a fight, probably, no exaggeration to say, the most crucial fight he's had as a professional, because with so many opportunities opening up, as I say, possible meeting with Frank Bruno, possible meeting with uh, Michael Bent, cannot afford to lose. Good work again here from Heidi. It's two right hands here. Now, it's one right hand, then right hand again. Really, he's fallen forward, so that's why he can't put real power behind him, but he's hitting him a lot of shots there. You know, a lot of, they all count when you're 15 stone plus. Strange tactics from, from Dixon, but maybe he has a battle plan that we're not aware of. an important psychological barrier against Everett Martin last time out proved to himself that he could if necessary go 10 hard rounds so I'm sure having gone 10 if the prospect of going 12 arises I shouldn't worry him unduly 
this however round four Hyde in white Dixon in the sea green it's the first right hand I've seen Dixon throw now as I said to you it's when uh, it'll be when Hyde starts to slow down the Dixon will be able to land his punches now this is most vital time for Hyde to do his work. He's got to work this guy over, really batter him with punches. And as soon as Dixon begins to open up, when he's still got that snap and speed that he he has, he's just got to he's just got to load up on his punches and try and get rid of this guy and get him out of there. There's so much at stake here. Chance of a world title fight. Chance of a fight with very popular Frank Bruno. So he's got everything to to go for here and everything to lose as well, so he's got to be careful not to get complacent. Can't allow this guy to get into the fight. In contrast to Hyde's speed, Dixon seems almost exaggeratedly slow and ponderous. Yeah, he's fighting slow motion here. He's getting me. You just can't carry on taking those sort of punches, especially in a long fight like this. He's Hyde really punches powerfully. I know a lot of those punches are fast and sort of just nipping in and getting them off and getting back out again, but there's also a lot of weight behind them. Doesn't seem to have done Dixon any real harm, but he hasn't been able to respond himself. Very little coming back from Dixon. Oh, yes. Good combination from Hyde again. Put him in trouble. Yeah. Dixon trying to hold. The first time we've seen Dixon fight back, so obviously hurt there. Uh, Hyde trying the right hand lead. Paid off first time. Sammy should do a little bit of a demolition job now on the American. Good right hand to the body from Dixon. Last ten. Hyde's right. beginning to blow here. He's starting to blow. Activity in the Dixon corner than there is in the Hyde corner, more of the same really, must surely be the instruction from, from Freddie and Jason King. Hyde again on top here, same pattern throughout the fight, just him getting off quick combinations, there's a good right hand from him. And it was the first time we saw Dixon fight back when he went back to the ropes, started to throw punches back. But again, dominant round from Hyde. You know, he's doing an awful lot of punching and he's beginning to blow here, showing the pace. It's getting to him a bit. Dixon, on the other hand, has done very little. Whether he's saving it for the later rounds or whether he'll have anything left by the time the later rounds come up, if they ever do, because he's taken an enormous batter in here. Still doesn't look too bad, though. Got a glimpse of the best cuts man in the business, Paddy Byrne, working his corner. Always a useful man to have in your camp. Round Round five. Schedule 12, remember. Dixon's still trudging forward. He's so concerned about Hyde, he's afraid to let his punches go. He's just walking straight on to get to those quick, fast punches of Hyde. He's just delivering them like a rocket. Every time Dixon looks as if he's going to punch, Hyde hits him with two quick shots and ties him up. And he looks gun-shy throughout this fight, Dixon. He, he looks as if he's afraid to throw punches because every time he goes to set himself, he gets nailed. I think it's part of that apprehension stems from the fact that Hyde does throw punches from such unorthodox angles. We really, we really have yet to see Hyde take a good shot. And the, this, the 
this guy has got enough left in the later rounds if he goes that far to be able to hit hide back it, it could be really interesting see how he handles it well we remember what bone crusher smith did to frank bruno some years back the fight that Bruno had one locked up in the dressing room and halfway home before Bone Crusher Smith caught up with him in the final round. Good work from Hyde. He should be banging that body more often. Dixon's heart is hard. Oh, hit him very low there. That's a very low punch. Time out. Time He'll out. be uh, allowed time to needs. recover. And Hyde might well have a point deduction from his scorecard. He was accidental. He certainly felt that. Yeah, that's uh, it's sporting of, of uh, Dixon. He didn't make a meal of it, and it was very low, so referee's given him every chance to recover. He can take up to five minutes to recover, according to the rules. That's very debilitating, though, when that does happen. It seconds you. It certainly does. It's, it's not, it leaves the old stomach nauseating, and anybody that's got a, a crack in the privates can tell you. <laughs> getting a bit tired and a wee bit despondent looking he's hit this guy with a lot of punches and he hasn't been able to get rid of him he's got to keep chipping away banging away that's good stuff that's from good high. From high that is good quick stuff That's what makes Larry O'Connell such a class act. Oh. Every so often, Hyde gets through with, with these blindingly quick combinations, and, and Dixon absorbs them like a sponge and, and trots back after him. But you wonder, Barry, just how much stick he can take in this fight. Yeah, and, and also the, the other question is uh, how long can Hyde start dishing those punches out? He's put a lot of weight in, into the punches and put a lot of def effort into these attacks. Watch how low this blow is here from Hyde. Oh, that's a poof. Now that lifted the cup protector right up. So um, he's every right to complain, Mike Dixon. Every right. But, as we said, to his credit, didn't make a meal of it. Sixth round. Five rounds gone. Five rounds high so far. Hyde's, Hyde's reaction uh, uh, quite remarkable for, for a heavyweight. Really are amazing. He's amazingly quick hands. And he pulls his he pulls his head back very well. He, he doesn't uh, doesn't put it forward. He doesn't put it to the side. He pulls it back. Tries to get his head. Look at how quick those shots are. It's really impressive stuff. Well, it certainly is a better performance than against Everett Martin. And Dixon hurt again. That's why he's just got to keep doing. That's a good combination there. And Dixon can keep taking those punches. Those are really good shots. Looking a little bit shaky now, Dixon. For the first time... Came back with his own left hook there. Look, Hyde scoring increasingly in this round. Getting through with some heavy stuff. <laughs> Dixon's starting to look just a little bit careworn. And Hyde has a real goal, and then he takes a breather, and he has a go again. He's blown here, Hyde, as well. This Dixon has taken an unbelievable belt in here. And Hyde isn't really wasting a shot at all. Once again, Dixon plods forward. Really drab performance from nothing at all, and doesn't look dangerous, doesn't look innocent like his record would suggest. Nothing at all. Just... He hit him on top of the cup protector and Hyde's complaining. <laughs> He's nothing to complain about. 
Dixon looking very tired now. Just walking over those punches. I just got to keep throwing those. Keep picking away at them and smacking that right hand in. But it's, it's been worrying as well as he's hit this guy on the button several times and it hasn't been able to hurt him, Dave. And this is a, a different class of opponent that he's been used to. These are the sort of guys he's going to have to overcome and he's going to have to be able to get rid of them too. Good left hook to the body from Dixon. That's a good shot. A really good shot from him. One thing I was not doing is get careless. So it seemed like a mental walkabout there for a minute. That will sap Hyde's strength again. He can't afford to get close to this guy. You can see him winding his punches up. He's just got to move to the side. Stop him punching. So the halfway stage. And... I don't think the Americans come within sniffing distance of winning a round, Barry. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been a very drab and lacklustre performance from Dixon. And, you know, again here you see the way... It, I mean, Hyde's just picking him off with punches. Quick fire combinations, straight punches, no hooks, just all straight. And then mixing in that occasional left hook and right hand. But he hasn't been able to hurt Dixon throughout the first six rounds, previous rounds. He hasn't hurt him that badly. Hit him with lots of punches and chipped away at him, but nothing, uh, nothing that really hurt the guy. I just wonder how long Larry O'Connell might allow Dixon to go on being used as a punch bag. Well, he's, he, he's going to go on, and this is a world title fight, so it's a junior world title fight, so he's going to learn to continue until he's uh, completely spent, and Larry O'Connell is a great judge of that, so you give him every chance. Dixon did pick things up at the end of the, the, the last, being the sixth round. And, you know, if he did throw punches, he could keep this guy off him, and he has a chance of, of hitting Hyde in, in these later rounds, because... Hyde is beginning to tire a bit and he's become a little bit disorientated and yes, he, he seemed to just lose there. concentration the last sort of 15 seconds of that, of that previous round and suddenly sort of as I said at the time went mental walkabout but I think he's finding a, a good fight in that he's pacing himself very well he's finding a little a little flusters and, uh, and, and uh, or little clusters I should say and flurries that uh, the American really has no answer to. Yeah, well, Hyde's, uh, Hyde's pacing himself, but as I said, what's worrying is he hasn't been able to hurt this guy, and uh, he's been hitting him with a lot of good punches, and, and Dixon has just walked through them. And he hasn't been able to hurt him, hit him with some great shots like that. The guy just, just trudges on in, and no seems to have no effect on the guitar. The American really looking facially to becoming a bit of a, a sorry state. Yeah, come on, I think that's a good combination. He's winding away at I don't know. He's got less and less and less in return now as Dixon. I call Larry O'Connell just looking at him very keenly there for a moment. Now he's still dangerous. He's still in there and, you know, he's always dangerous until he's on the floor. Well... 60 seconds left in this round seven. Left hook to the body from him again, but just not enough punches, and he's getting beaten up here. Uh, there's, a, there's a kind of a, a dogged, stubborn courage about the American's performance, but I'm afraid not too much else. This is the round that Lennox Lewis was able to get rid of him. And he, do, he done it very effectively, Dave. He just put him on the floor twice and after he stopped the fight. Uh, another round in the Hyde credit column. Well, I'm sure he'll be getting a little bit frustrated now because he really is hitting Dixon with every single in the book and yet his opponent is still there. 
squeeze. Yeah, it's uh, another. Another round to uh, hide, but it's turned into a real drab affair. It's the same old pattern over and over again. Dixon walking, trudging forward and getting picked to pieces. He's just chopping away at him, but has been. That's the worrying thing is that he's not been able to put him over. He hit him. With, just let, let's have a look at some of these clean punches here. Look, right on the button there. Yet the guy's still there and uh, still punching back occasionally. Still bet against it going the full 12, but it looks increasingly though. Herbie Hyde and Mike Dixon might just prove me wrong. Dixon taking one or two on the gloves, but an awful lot more getting through. Yeah, Hyde's hitting him with some great shots, but he should be mixing in more body punches. You know, he's hit this guy with everything up top and hasn't seen to be able to hurt him. He should really concentrate on banging the midsection now in this last quarter of this fight. And then he can switch up top. If he, get, if he bangs that solar plexus, Dixon will expose his chin again, and there's every chance that he could hit him with a real knockout blow. It's getting more and more like it's going to go the distance. And, oh, oh, beautiful right, right, hand, right on the bridge of the nose. Whoa. Dixon was hurt with that one, no doubt about that. Looked at Hyde and shook his head, but it's a, it's a big giveaway. It's a good snappy jab from Hyde, that's really good. Well, really, this is becoming just a, an extended sparring session for Hyde. He's doing pretty much as he likes in that ring. No sparks from Mike Dixon at all. I mean, he's just taken a shell I can hear from the first bell and he hasn't thrown anything back. He hasn't looked dangerous. He hasn't done anything at all and really has become a, a boring one-sided fight. Hyde, to his credit, has done the best he can to get rid of this guy, but hasn't been able to do it. Yes, the, the, the younger Herbie Hard, as we saw again, Sean Chanet got discouraged when he couldn't stop his opponent and seemed to run out of ideas when, when, he, when he couldn't knock his opponent down. But when I talked to Herbie after the last fight with, with Everett Martin, and he said he was, he was glad to have gone the distance. He was glad that this record he had of 22 fights, 22 wins, 22 stoppages, which was like a bit of a millstone, having to stop every opponent that he faced in the ring, he was glad that was out of the way now. And yeah. he, his performance tonight certainly has been a lot more relaxed. Yeah, you can't, you know, you can't knock everybody out. And it's Absolutely understandable not. when you step up in class. The guys are going to be that more difficult to hit with clean punches, and they're going to be that much tougher when you do hit them, and they're going to hit you back more often. And that's exactly what's happening here tonight. This guy has proven to be a difficult guy to get rid of, and it's, you know, it's a fairly performance from him and again another dominant round for, for Hyde. Well, Dixon has absorbed an almost supernatural degree of punishment in this fight and he still if it goes at the distance has four rounds of punishment to go. guy's eating so many of these right hands. Watch this, look right down the bridge of the nose. Now that one really hurt. It's the first time, and, and again, Dixon sagged at the knees, but came right back. Just came right back, trudging forward, same old thing. No punches, but walking into punishment. Now see, can Hyde step up a gear here, turn him around, hit him with combinations, feed with punches, and take over and stop, be able to stop the guy. This is what he's got to be able to do if he wants to win a world title. 
That's right. Round nine. impressively he's got to stay on top of this guy jump in there the referee looked like he was going to have a jump in and stop that but Hyde's got to just keep going keep banging away the guy's not punching back keep slinging your punches clipped him with a little left no power there's enough to stop Hyde punching his head the referee just said mind your head Hyde's got to step up the gear here he's blown he's got to be able to step up with this guy really all over all over no punch heavier than the last but Larry O'Connell had seen enough good referee the boos ring out stoppage some of the crowd yelling out what are you stopping the fight for well the answer in a sentence is that there was no sense in Mike Dixon getting more beaten up than he was already getting as I say that uh, one minute 26 seconds that attack from uh, from Hyde but uh, just the cumulative effect finally took their toll on Mike Dixon. So, not well received, but I shouldn't think that'll worry Hyde one little bit. The American, in contrast, getting a warm round of applause. And right now, the belts being presented to the winner, so the WBA Penta will get the, uh, we'll get the, the belt presented back to Herbie. To Herbie Hyde, which is a bit bizarre as he came into the ring with it, but now he's going to get it awarded back to him again. We'll be, we'll be talking to Herbie in just a moment, incidentally. Baron McGuigan making his way round to uh, our ringside interview point. to say I reckon that was a pretty good performance by Herbie didn't waste a shot stopped his man and we can have a look now at the last stages of this contest and really when you look at that not a punch wasted Larry O'Connell did exactly the right thing driven across the ring still there but really with with nothing and I have to say I found the American very disappointing he came in with a good reputation stopped Alex Garcia but uh, well didn't show anything of that form here tonight now Herbie coming down to ringside Barry McGuigan is waiting for him just so let's hear from Barry now. Herbie, were you disappointed you weren't able to stop this guy? I stopped him, Barry. I stopped him. Well, the referee stopped it. Were you disappointed you weren't able to finish him with your own punches? Well, not really, because I'm, I'm aware about 14 and a half stun. I'm not really um, a deadly stand puncher, but my game is to be here and not be here. I won every round. I, I told you him. I'm off. I'm now. I want to fight Frank. Well, do you want to fight Frank or do you want to fight Michael Bent? I want to fight Michael Bent, but Frank and I, we have to fight for him later. Bruno, I know you're listening. I know you'll be watching. Let's not play girly girly. Let's get it on. 
Lennox Lewis is the heavyweight chairman of, of, of the world, and I'm the heavyweight chairman of Great Britain. We have to know where Frank stands. Frank has never fought anyone in my stand. He always fought people less than he fought for water and get knocked out. Frank, I like you. You're a nice guy, but let's not let's get on. Let's not play girl. I know you're listening. Give Barry a ring. Let's get on. So it's not Michael Bent, it's going to be Frank Bruno. I want, I, I want Michael Bent, but um, Barry said I have to have a limit. We have Barry Hearn here. What do you what do you say to that, Barry? Well, I think it'll be someday. I'll be, you know, Michael Bent has got to be the plans for both Frank Bruno. Or Herbie Hyde. I think what the British public want to see is let's get Hyde and Bruno together. Let the winner have Michael Bent. Let them earn the right to fight for the world title. Herbie will be number one by Christmas, but that doesn't matter. He wants to prove that he's there on justified grounds. I know Frank will want to do the same. The message is the same. The British public demanded Bruno. Let's get this fight on. The winner can definitely fight for a world title. Any interest from Mr. Bruno? I'm sitting down with his uh, mentor, Mr. Duff, on Monday, uh, and I look forward to that conversation enormously. And I think we can get the fight on. I think there's a willingness on both parties. Let's get it on. Let's have a proper fight. Congratulations, Herbie. Congratulations, Barry. Well done, team. Tremendous performance. So there we go. It's Herbie Hyde. We've seen him really give away a lot of weight to guys like Everett Martin, Mike Dixon. Today, He's in the unusual position of being a little bit heavier than his opponent, Jeff Lamkin. But Lamkin, on the other hand, will certainly be a lot quicker than Everett Martin. That's the thing that Herbie has. Exactly, Dave. That's the thing that Herbie ha has over most of the heavyweights. His hand speed, his quick movement, is the fact that he's able to get to his opponents before they can get to him. Now, this will be interesting to see. Can Lamkin take away that speed, or can he equalize it with his own speed? There's Freddie King. Long-time trainer, of course, of, of Herbie. But in the final touches, always comes in looking absolutely peak condition. Marky Lamkin looks pretty, pretty good. And he's an experienced old pro having his 54th professional contest tonight. His 54th and final professional contest, if oh, we're to believe him. So this is scheduled for 12, and at stake is Herbie Hyde's WBC International oh, Heavyweight okay, title and his unbeaten record. Jim. Two judges and referee Christodoulou will score. Hyde in the white trunks and Lampkin in the black with the red trim. Round one. Good right hand from Hyde at the start of the fight. Pretty messy opening. The referee will give them a ticking off. Yeah, yeah, good, <laughs> good stuff. Don't stop that. I'll handle it. Hey, well done, Stan. Yeah, Lampkin seems to have come to fight. You can never tell whether these guys lose ambition after they lose the title, and you can never tell how they're going to perform. But Hyde looks big, doesn't he, in comparison to him? He looks so broad and powerful around the shoulders. Great balance Hyde has. That's that's his one of his best assets is his balance. Can tr throw tremendously fast punches. The curious habit that we in Great Britain have of of knocking our successful sportsmen and women sometimes, I guess. Hyde is now starting to attract criticism, as Frank Bruno did before him, and Joe Bugner did before Bruno, and. Well, really right back, and there's the first knockdown. Nothing more than a jab, really. Well, there's a right hand. It's either hit him on the top of the top of the head or in the forehead. Six, seven, They've done some sparring together, these two. So they should, the stars should be familiar. A little nod of acknowledgement from Lamkin as he gets up. Good straight punches. Good jolting punches from Hyde. Those are landing nice and clean. But we did uh, we did say that that uh, Mike Dixon had sparred with uh, Herbie as well and he wasn't able to perform that well against him. He threw all the punches but wasn't able to get rid of him. And it became a bit monotonous and a bit boring. He's doing a good job on Lampkin here. Referee saying don't hold and hit. After the, the Everett Martin fight, Martin commandeered the ring microphone from our regular Pro Box MC Alan Hughes and accused Herbie of being a dirty fighter. Well, I don't think that's that's particularly true. Boxes within the rules, takes the odd liberty, but I don't think he's a dirty fighter. 
and you need to be a little bit mean in this game if you're going to reach the highest level yeah the referee's in there to protect the other guys he just you abide by the rules but keep chucking your well, punches good right, oh, up good right up because just couldn't miss with a left hook all the same lampkin came back that's his pet punch lampkin's that left hook it's a fabulous punch he that's the punch he destroyed uh, mccrory exactly. with wasn't it left hook to the body he folded mccrory up with so no doubt that this guy can punch out of his 37 wins 32 came by way of ko so no, no doubt he can bang so he's got to watch that oh uh oh, oh. <laughs> stop after the uh, bell. Yes, end of, end of the round, guys. Now, now I heard he's was actually wasn't knocked doing anything to the silly. floor with a left uppercut there after the bell had rung. So, what's going to happen here? And to Lampkin's credit, he does not make a meal of that. The referee, I think, is indicating to the judges to take one point away. He's going to play up this cube. Mm -hmm. That was the right hand. Didn't seem to be that powerful now, to be honest. He was about to follow up with the left. But uh, didn't actually have to do that because he went to the floor. Lampton. Sorry about that, but yes, I've told you. Take it easy. He hit me first. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Freddie apologising on Herbie's behalf. So round two and an action packed opening round. And I think a more positive opening from Herbie than we've seen in his last couple of fights. Yeah. Down again. Hit him with a nice short left uppercut. We just, just missed that. Him a nice short swift uppercut. Now is Hyde beginning to punch more powerfully? Can just Lying down here, I don't know. Good left uppercut again from Hyde. It was a little short punch, but he's putting all the weight behind him, getting all the weight behind him. Well, I asked the question to begin with Would Lampkin come to fight and would he really come to try? He still hasn't answered that yet for me. You may not get the chance, Barry. Way Hyde's doing a job on him at the moment. Hyde looking for the opening. Oh, that's good from Hyde. Three straight little short punches, and Lampkin says, Come on. Maybe we should say to him, You come on. Start throwing punches back. Oh, good left hook from him. Oh, Got him right again. Cracking little shot. And I don't think this is going to go on too much longer, you know. Good right up, of course. Count is seven. Yeah. He doesn't know whether he wants to continue this guy. We're in round two. Good left and up. Hyde's got again. time to finish up. Loads of time here. Cameraman almost got nailed there. Leg seems to be going from Lampkin. Good right up, could come back with his own left hook. Right hand. Making no attempt to get up. Count is nine and out. Knocked out. Round two. And Hyde retains his title. Some of the crowd booing that, which is a little unfair. He did the job, he did it efficiently. Yeah, I don't know whether Lampkin had too much desire there. Um, and uh, he got hit with a couple of good short little punches, but nothing too devastating. And uh, he walked over for the third time and wasn't interested in getting up. So it's a sh sad way for Jeff Lampkin to end his professional career. If indeed this is going to be his last fight, he said beforehand that win, lose or draw, this was going to be his last contest. Sad way to finish if that is the case. Yeah, we see the, the end of it again here. Right, that's the right hook around the side that uh, made his mind up for him. Hyde will be, will be pleased to have an inside the distance win, uh, a convincing inside the distance win. This fight has stopped two minutes, 10 seconds in the second round. The winner. 
and still the WBC International Heavyweight. Put your hands together for Herbie the Dancing Destroyer, Hyde!